Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip. Um, so today we're talking Ceph again, and in particular uh, how it stores. And so in the past I've talked uh, uh, kind of high level how it stores its data, replication, erasure code, and we all know about that, but that's kind of high level, right? That's replication, give me n number of copies. Uh, erasure code, cut it up into chunks and give me some parity. But like, we, we still get this question a lot, whether uh, through customers and uh, through everyone, um, how does it actually like store it behind the scenes? Where does it go? Like, I know it's creating replicas, but you told me I've got a big sea of hard drives here across the nodes. How do I know that two copies in my replicated two pool aren't going on the same hard drive? Like, right? Like, I assume that is not how it works, but how does that work? Anyway, we get questions like that all the time. So what we wanted to do for this tech tip is uh, we're gonna hop over to my computer, I'm gonna do a little screen cap, and I'm just gonna kinda walk you through where the data gets stored. I'm gonna show you kind of a little bit behind the scenes of a, of a crush map and, and the idea of uh, the rules on how Ceph determines where objects and your data should live such that everything's always safe. So uh, let's go over to my computer and uh, we'll get into it. Okay, so we're going to get started with a pretty small Ceph cluster here, uh, just three node with uh, two OSD disks in each one hard drives. Um, the idea here is just easily show the data distribution. Um, so we've spent a lot of time talking about how Ceph can present and store your data as uh, either file, block, or object. Um, we've talked about how it keeps it safe by keeping uh, repli uh, replications of, of the data. Um, or um, erasure code, how it splits it up into k number of data chunks, m number of parity chunks, and distributes around the cluster, similar to a RAID. But uh, we never really talked about how Ceph quite keeps things safe behind the scenes. We know it's just a bunch of disks and a bunch of storage servers. Um, no RAID, what, ha what happens if a disk fails? Ha I know I've got copies, but what happens if the, my copies are all in the same hard drive? Like, how does Ceph prevent this from happening? So that's what I want to talk about today. So... Uh, the key kind of driver to all of that is called the CRUSH algorithm, and that's uh, Controlled Replication Under Scalable Hashing. Now, the CRUSH algorithm, uh, algorithm essentially determines how to store or retrieve uh, the data in the cluster. Um, how does it do that? Well, it stores and retrieves from the data locations. So what are these data locations? Well, the data locations are the physical hard drives or SSDs or NVMe, whatever your physical storage media is, organized into OSD hosts. And it is best represented as a tree. Um, and what this, this, this thing is is called the crush map. And it is the organization, it's the visualization, it's how us as people and how the, the crush algorithm can um, visualize our storage cluster, if you will. So if we look right now um, on my screen here, so I'm on the Ceph dashboard, and we're looking at the default crush map that was created when I built this cluster. Now, you can get pretty crazy into some custom crush, ma crush, eh, custom crush maps, but we're just going to stay with the default here to get an understanding of what's going on. So as you can see, we've got our default root, and that's just like our the, the root of our tree of all our possible storage locations. Uh, I have three hosts, and in each host there's two physical uh, OSD hard drives. So this is where the data is going to go. But these are all individual hard drives. How, if I write to a three replicated storage pool that's living on this cluster, how, how do I know that all three copies aren't gonna go into OSD zero here? Because two problems with that, uh, it's not very safe at all. And three, um, two, <laughs> uh, two, it's just uneven data. Like you just get a horrible, we want a clean even distribution and we do not want our copies all on the same storage media, and even further, even in the same host. So how does Ceph, how does Crush do this? Well, it you we, we use the concept of, it uses a concept of a Crush rule, and the Crush rule is exactly that, the rule that tells the Crush algorithm how to put the data in the Crush map here, in the tree, such that everything is very safe. Uh, so let me hop over to this screen here and I'll show you the, and let's look at the command here to create a replicated rule. Um, 
the concept of, of what I'm going to get into applies to erasure code as well, but it's just really easy to visualize with replication, so we'll, we'll focus on that. So let's look at this command here. So we're going to create a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, create a new replicated crush rule. So it needs a name. Everything needs a name. And then the root. Uh, the root is our default root here. Again, I said you can get pretty crazy with the custom maps, but uh, for the time being, we would just use the default root. Um, and the magic here, the real, the real important one that answers that question I was asking, how do I keep my data dispersed, is the failure domain type. So this failure domain type can be uh, a number of different options, but we'll just talk about two right now to keep it simple. It can either be host or it can be OSD. And what that means, if I set this failure domain to host when I create a rule, I make this replicated rule, I set my failure domain to host, and then I write to that pool that has this rule um, applied to it. And it's three replication. That guarantees that each copy of the data, one, two, and three, has to go to a unique host in the crush map. So, via, so either of my hosts here. So under each one, it could be either OSD 1 and 5, 2 and 3, or 0 and 4. But no, no copy of this object can ever live on the same host of another one. That's what this failure domain type does. And then the last option here is class. It's the device class, whether it's hard drive, SSD, NVMe. Um, not as important for uh, uh, more, more performance, not so much for <coughs> keeping your data very safe. So uh, that's the failure domain type. The second one we could do here is the OSD failure domain. And what that would mean is the same idea, but no more than one copy of the data would live on the same OSD. So we're safe against drive failure. But not so much get host failure. So you don't see too many times people in the field actually using the OSD as a failure domain level. That's not a very safe way to build a cluster. Matter of fact, as these things get bigger, it's better to even abstract out further and organize your hosts into data centers or rooms <coughs> and spread the data out that way. But that's, that's really the point I wanted to make sure. How does Ceph guarantee that the data does not end up living on the same host or the same disk? or even further as we extrapolate maybe the same room or the same data center. It's this failure domain type of the crush rule that's applied to the storage pool, which tells the crush algorithm how to behave, how to keep the data safe, and where to pull it back from. Okay, so that was a lot of talking. So let's just show you. Let's show you what I'm talking about here. So I've already made a, a couple rules here. So I'm going to hop over into a pool, to the pool screen. I'm going to make a new pool, and I'm just going to call it test pool. And we're going to make a replicated pool. I'm just going to pick a small number of placement groups. doesn't matter so much for this. And I'm going to use one of the rules that I have. The replicated rule gets made by default. Uh, replicated HDD is another one I have here. And let me just hit this mark. So what this is saying is it's a replicated rule. My data type or my device class is a hard drive so only put uh, uh, data from this pool on hard drives and my failure domain is host so if I uh, if we if you know look at this one actually um, yeah so let's make it rep we'll do rep 3 we'll just put RBD on it to silence the warning um, so let's create a pool. It'll just take a minute for it to go active and clean. Okay. So uh, there's our pool. Okay, so we have our test pool created, uh, replicated, uh, device class only live on hard drives and failure domains at the host. So. What I'm going to do is I have a file created here, just hello world, fun, classic example. Uh, and we're going to put this into the cluster. So I'm going to say Rados P test pool put object one hello.txt. All right, so it's in there. Uh, Rados um, dash P test pool underscore ls. Here we go. And if we look at Ceph status, 
here's our one massive object of six bytes. Um, so that's all well and good. It's in the cluster. Uh, how do you know it's following our rule? So let's take a look at Ceph OSD map and then test pool object one and I'm going to fix the format. Okay, so what we're looking at here is this. This, my mouse sucks. This uh, up block. So what that's telling us is those are three OSDs that each hold a copy of this data. So right away you can see our three rep is following the rules and we have three copies of the data. Um, these, are the, these are the OSD IDs. These is what we can recognize the, uh, the OSD disks as. And uh, let's find out if it is correctly mapped out. So we're looking at three, four, and five. So four is on OSD two, three is on OSD three, and five is on OSD one. So right there, they are all living on three unique hosts. Um, great, looks like it's following the rule. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's go Ceph OSD pool set test pool crush rule. So I have another crush rule made. It's the exact same rule, except the failure domain is at the OSD level now rather than the host. So let's set this rule um, HTD OSD oh, learn to spell first okay so that's there and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna put that same object P back onto the pool as a separate name and see where it maps to object tool jeez, uh, no, sorry that's not right, there we go And I have to put put. I to tell it what to do. There, it's these are two objects of twelve bytes. And uh, let's map that out. Ceph OSD uh, map test pool object two F JSON pretty. All right, so. Here is our object two made on the pool after we've changed the rule to OSD failure domain and we see one, five, and three. So one and five are on the same host and that goes to show you right there that kind of way to illustrate the rule. Um, that failure domain is really the key part that keeps your data safe. Uh, of course, this is a simple example of just host and OSD. Um, a lot of large clusters can sometimes span rooms or data centers and you can extrapolate these, these maps out bigger and have your default have a data center tree and then many hosts below it and, and organize data out that way. So um, incredibly really uh, scalable way of storing data. Obviously that's why Ceph is such an amazing project but uh, hope uh, this gave you a little more insight on uh, where your data is actually going and how you can trust that it's safe and sound. So there it is, a, a little deeper look into uh, what Ceph's actually doing behind the scenes and keeping your data safe and how it follows the rules to keep everything dispersed. Um, again, yeah, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed that. As always, reach out, questions, comments, any of our social media, we'd love to hear from you. Um, fun fact time. Uh, as always, I'm out of fun facts now. Um, so I'm going to go to my old trusty friend Reddit here. I was browsing the other day and uh, found a good thread. It was like, what's your favorite fun fact to pull out? They're always fun to read through and found a couple good ones. But one of them actually, the reason why it is top 40 hits is that jukeboxes could only fit 40 records on them. So the owners would use the top 40 list as a way to know which records to buy. As the more popular ones would get played more and thus get them more money. Honestly, it just sounds like they need a storage cluster. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks.